All right, thanks everyone for jumping in today. Uh, we have a lot of stuff to cover, but I'll start with the, the most exciting thing that happened to me personally, and I think the community as a whole, uh, is the, the webinar that happened today. And not sure how many people were able to attend to it, but please, please, please check out the recording after this call or whenever you can, because that was the most insightful explanation of what is happening with the actual virus in very simple terms in very simple illustrations. And I'm actually thinking that it's our responsibility to take Sid and some of the graphic designers and just illustrate what he has done and just place it somewhere because it's such an amazing you know, explanation of things, even though some things are just assumptions, some things are um, you know, uh, extrapolations of data, but like even at this point, it really helps everyone. And I think it will change some of our perspectives on the individual subtasks and questions that were presented in Kaggle. Anyways, so I'll, I would like to start this call with um, a small announcement. We're trying to uh, establish a process for uh, uh, kind of creating the follow-up um, items, the action items for each of the calls. So you've probably seen that I've been trying to do that for the very first calls, but then I just um, couldn't do it anymore uh, because of the lack of the time. And I think um, we have some ideas how to transform that and basically make sure that each of the calls will have follow-up items as Trello cards. Um, Alessia uh, joined us uh, two days ago and helped me create the timestamps yesterday for the call. And I asked her to come up with some form of a process for us to uh, basically scale this um, creation of follow-up items because I essentially asked her to help me create those follow-up items. But then she said that uh, as she was writing down these, uh, she realized there is no chance uh, that I or her will be able to do it for all the teams all the time. So there is no like general approach to it, maybe. Uh, that's again, a, a big science experiment. A lot of things that we're doing here is just pure science and testing things very fast and seeing what the outcomes are. So uh, one of the ways to solve that um, is basically trying to pick a person from the call that uh, will be able to, to help with those, with those. So here's the four item uh, checklist process that we are proposing. At the beginning of the meeting, ask one person to volunteer to write down action items and responsible person for it, if possible. After team decided on an action item, ask who can take care of this task. After that task, um, a responsible person, after that, ask a responsible person to write this down. At the end of the call, ask this person to quickly read action items and who is doing them. And after the call, responsible person should, uh, should uh, do the uh, action, uh, should create the action items as tasks and add them to the Trello board and assign to the person that will be working on them. So I would like to test it right now. Is there a person that would like to volunteer and uh, help us create the follow-up uh, items from this call? Uh, I can do it for this call. All right, sounds great. So um, basically the process will be whenever we discuss that we need to do something and that sounds like an actionable thing and not just the general idea, even though a general ideas I think are also applicable, but something that is almost crystallized, you should inter interrupt us and basically ask, uh, so who do you think can help us with that? And right. if there is a person on our mind, we'll tell you. If not, we'll tell you, you know, we'll, we'll have to find someone uh, help them. Sounds okay. good. Okay, All right. yeah, perfect. So, Hopefully this works. Let's see how it works. We'll definitely uh, find ways to improve it. So the first thing that um, I put on the agenda is uh, discuss PM, uh, PM, project management challenges. And I put, it's not about coming to the teams with some amazing structure or process, but injecting yourself into the flow and being the maintenance person for the team, doing everything that is required to support them on their goal from data to desired output. 
So formulating desired output is another dimension of PMs uh, that they should be thinking in, but in full integration and the context of what their team is doing. And that was my idea yesterday. Since yesterday, I had kind of like eureka moment and started creating some structures and flow charts to further um, give guidance on how to do it. And it sounds very complex. There are so many things attached to it, but I truly believe it's possible to create some form of uh, flow chart. For right now, I separated it into multiple dimensions. Because project management in general sounds like a lot. And I've identified these areas, which are assistance with video calls, calendars, uh, exactly what we're trying to help here. Um, calendars is also a crazy task that I'm going insane with. So hopefully we'll figure that out. Uh, the second one is uh, helping with the actual tasks and helping teams pro progress uh, on the tasks. The other one is helping connect different moving pieces and working with human resources to identify what pieces are out there, what the needs are, and just connecting them. And since yesterday, we actually have the human resources department, uh, which is supposed to, to help with that. It's, it's quite uh, interesting to see how much uh, we're adding to, to, to the organization. So as you can see, there are multiple dimensions that PR should be working in. And I'm, uh, I'm going to share my screen real quick to showcase my thinking about how to approach it. And this is just uh, some work in progress, but it will give you a better idea of uh, what I'm working on. And maybe there is someone from the PM team that will volunteer to help me structure this. So basically I think that there is, you can think of everything as timelines and there are things happening and progressing. Uh, so basically it starts from person filling out the website form and then it goes into kind of the question block. Is person readily applicable to the existing needs? If yes, connector takes the responsibility to onboard this person. For example, if we really need the, uh, the virologist right now and there is virologist that jumps in uh, on the website, you have to kind of guide him and onboard him for the, uh, the, the optimization of the process. If no, uh, that person will join Slack, uh, maybe. There, there should be another branch, like if people won't join Slack, and that is definitely happening. And people introduce themselves, and this is where um, this connector person reaches out to make sure they introduce themselves, or connector welcomes and suggests uh, some relevant channels. I also added suggest relevant resources, because I start realizing that people um, don't really know that there is stuff that would be beneficial to them. And I even start adding screenshots for like analogies. So there's this guy that is working on the search engine type of stuff. And I, I asked him if he's aware of the UMLS column uh, that we have in the data set. And he just asked, what does the UMLS column uh, contain? And I said, glad you asked uh, because we have the FAQ on this. So basically, we can streamline the relevancy of resources to specific people. All right, so I won't proceed on this one, frankly, because I haven't had time to finish it. But I started working on a second one, which is another dimension of PM. And this is primarily for task-specific PM timeline. So here, the goal for this uh, kind of structure is, first of all, you as PM, you have to identify where you are on this timeline. Then you have to identify who are the members that you're working on. And third, I, I haven't had a chance to, to proceed, but there, there has to be something happening after that. And the test specific timeline um, is kind of formalized already. So first step is defining the question. You need to help defining the actual general idea and specific questions that stem out of it. So we have the general uh, ask from Kaggle, and we're trying to define the, the specific questions that these uh, abstract uh, questions contain. Then you need to help explore, and by you, I mean this abstract PM engine, or you specifically as a member of a team. 
So you need to help to explore and define basic semantics and structure behind the underlying matters. Stages of disease, types of risk factors, other things. Then there is prioritization. You need to help to prioritize and allocate limited resources properly. Obviously, if there are hundreds of risk factors, you need to prioritize which ones are most feasible and which ones we have data on. Next one is problems. You need to help to define types of problems to solve to answer those questions. And don't worry if this all sounds overwhelming. Like I'll work uh, with you on kind of explaining it easier, but for right now, this is just a, some rough outline. So the next step is need to uh, help to define inputs for the problems. So let's say we have the classification problems, what kind of inputs we have? Lists of keywords or uh, papers or whatever. Then you need to help to find person for the implementation, whether it's NLP task or regression or any other task. Then you need to help to define what outputs look like basically formalizing some structure, whether it's, whether it's table or something, or CSV file, uh, you name it. Then you need to help to assess findings and if they make sense. Also a very important thing, and most probably the actual uh, team leaders won't have enough time to assess all of these things, and that's why we need to distribute this to PMs. And also PMs will be way more equipped to do this task. And then the final step, and maybe there are some more, but so far I've identified visuals as the one as uh, need to help to transform findings into visuals. So be it data visualization or just, you know, nice uh, graphics or something interactive, you have to uh, help team leaders understand what that is. Boom, this is a, a, a giant knowledge uh, bomb that, uh, I dropped on all of you guys. Hopefully it makes sense. Uh, we can further discuss it. And uh, I'll, I'll um, basically advise everyone who thinks they can help on formalizing this to jump into PM channel and start the discussion. I'll send the, uh, the current screenshot of this uh, structure for us to, to start the discussion. All right, so... And this was a task-specific uh, timeline, but obviously there are some things that connect to the human resources and primarily to uh, like identifying the, the needs and how to connect those needs. There was some amazing work that Frangis uh, created. Uh, let me share a screen again. She created tag list to match volunteers to teams. And the idea behind this that each team or task um, it has some specific tags, like whether it's NLP or virology or uh, geography, something, and you can develop the kind of the descriptive way to match uh, these tasks to individuals. And we've been trying to prototype it through just using the previous uh, team sheet and filtering people by keywords that they input as key skills. So far it's working and I think it's a, a pretty cool uh, kind of MVP to whatever smart AI system will will create to match uh, people automatically to things. So whoever can help Frankies um, formalize this list and make it, uh, um, make it more extensive, uh, feel free to reach out to her or jump into the program management channel. So is that a task? Yes, it is a task. Okay, so let's let's write this down, right? So formalize list of skills. Uh, I've put it down as formalize the list of skills. Um, uh, should we call them tags, maybe? Uh, yeah, for, for right now, it's it's okay to call it whatever you want just to take a note and then you, you can spend extra time thinking about how to properly put it in, in, into Trello. Right, and do we have any takers for this one? Do we? Is there someone uh, on the call? I don't think so. So probably have to find that person. Okay.
All right. We can right. go on. Sounds good. So that is basically introduction into human resources and the challenges that we're trying to tackle uh, right now. The next uh, point on the agenda is discussing communications challenges. And maybe Daniel, you would be uh, the best person to jump in on here. Sure, that sounds good. I'm just gonna quickly share my screen. So one of our biggest challenges right now really is a mixture of being understaffed and having an ability to, to quickly get the sense of what it is that people need. I'm gonna quickly show what we've done with our Trello board. Um, we can also help if anyone else wants something like this for theirs. So again, we have our archived area. Um, each day we list down what are the things that we've done so that we can report out. So those reports help the rest of us understand what's going on. We have whatever's ongoing. Um, stuck, um, we're trying to, to list whatever's there. Notice also each thing is, is labeled. Um, we're trying to label that so it makes it easier for people to jump in and see what the things that matter for them are. We have some people who are amazing at creating materials so they can jump in here and see, oh, okay, there's materials needed for this task or that task. Um, one of the things we really um, want to, let's see, actually, those ones, those ones are, are, are stuck for internal reasons, so we don't need, need help on those ones. Um, one of the other things that I'm going to mention that we've done over here is hopping over here to resources, a couple of things that make it um, easier to, to jump in. We're going to add this so that we can understand everybody's needs and you can write them down more easily. So under resources, we have um, HR needs and each board will have this soon. But when you click through to that, it will take you to your team's needs board. So this should take us, it didn't yet, but we'll, I'll, I'll fix that. It should take us to the communications needs board. And we're going to keep these boards as best we can organized in terms of priority. So data sets has a priority five HR need. And so they're the first board that's there. So when we send people over to this spreadsheet, um, that hopefully will help them find it. But we really, again, uh, we, we need to have people filling out those forms so that we, so that we know where to direct people to. Um, the other piece that's amazing that's in here that I think will be a help in terms of knowing who to talk to about things um, is I think it was Frenkie's put together our communication member sheet. So for people who are a, a, a consistent member of the communications team, this lets us, lets us see who they are, what their skill set is, you know, we can look at their LinkedIn, we can do anything that we need to to figure out where we might want to assign a task. So it's a little bit of work putting it together, but it also helps formalize for your team. Um, when you tell somebody, hey, okay, it seems like maybe you should go and, and fill out the team roster. Um, that sort of is, a, it's, it's one of those steps of initiation of that person is really now a part of whatever the team is that, that, that you are. Um, blockers for us, it would be great if we can get some people who are helping us do some quick sweeps of some of the channels to be picking up some of the different ideas and resources that have been listed but not necessarily put into a spreadsheet. And we're still in, in need of uh, a, minute take, uh, a minute taker who can go back over the past video calls that have happened. Um, and we're looking for someone still who can be doing that second daily call in the in the day. And that, you know, there, there's an easy format to follow for that. It just has to be someone who's willing to be there, is able to be alert, and is able to, to guide whoever is on that call through the process. Okay, so is the is the sweeping through these boards a task that you want to note down? Yes, absolutely. And that's one that we need somebody for. There's no takers at present. So this is more like a, a sort of a backlog pruning, if I, if I may use that word? Exactly right. OK. And we may come up with it with a more clever way to do that. Maybe we make a temporary channel, and anybody who sees something throws it in. Yeah, like maintenance or hygiene, you know, those type of. Okay, so I've noted down noted it down as backlog pruning uh, of slacker boards. Uh, is that what the, what that is? Those are boards, right? Uh, yeah, and, and we can we can refine offline uh, the the kind of the wording for it. But uh, but yeah, if we throw that into a into a Trello piece, then we'll be able to, uh, to to take it from there. Thank you. Yeah, sounds great. Sounds like the process is is working. All right, amazing. Uh, so uh, let's jump into the team reporting uh, section. I'll quickly remind the structure. High level progress, quick summary, and top three tasks that are being worked on. Time to results. What are the results and how soon can you show them uh, externally? And blockers. What do you need help with? We're going to start with uh, risk factors team. Maya, go ahead. Uh, hi. Um, <clears throat> uh, thanks to uh, uh, 
Iason. Uh, we've been uh, able uh, today to formulate the Indie we've got today, uh, yesterday 4 a.m. I've talked to Randall, who is an uh, extremely experienced uh, domain expert. And he told me that uh, uh, from his experience, the main problems at the moment scientific community focus, uh, focuses on um, are age and underlying health conditions, pulmonary diseases, heart diseases, heart transplants, uh, and uh, smoking. These five are super crucial, and that is something they would love to have as soon as possible. Uh, we've uh, created uh, trailer cards and uh, started to find for people to help us to create the proper B grams and three grams uh, to be able to search through the papers to extract the relevant information. Uh, there are two guys who help us uh, with the code part in order to find B grams and three grams because we kind of have the initial code, but I'm kind of want to improve it. Uh, one, uh, one person helps us to make it a Pythonic uh, code and one person uh, helps us uh, to extend search not just to abstracts but to all sections in the papers if it makes sense to you mm -hmm. okay and we already have some no less technical uh, people with a good strong logic who started to find for uh, a for a word combination in a thresher tool and and check if, if the word combination brings the relevant results. Amazing. From that, sounds sounds great, I know, yes. <laughs> <laughs> From that, uh, we can move to um, extracting the um, extracting uh, the data. Uh, the blocker. We need more people on that. This is this is less cool and less sexy and less coding and less less everything tasks that nobody wants. But we really, really, really need help on that one. So yeah. people with some kind like ideas about sem uh, semantics and um, an ability to create a big gram and three gram dictionaries, please contact me. We really need you. So Maya, I'll get in touch with you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. All right. That, that is a perfect example of a need that human resources should be focusing on and matching people that are uh, ideal for this type of help. So hopefully we establish a process. We don't have one yet, but it kind of happens organically with everyone pulling people from the general uh, channel. But yes, let's, let's try to figure out a process for that. Um, if there is a person that can help us, maybe with some HR background, or you may know a person with the HR background, let's, uh, let's try and formalize what exactly this person should help us. Because a lot of people that are joining our Slack uh, are confused where, where and how they can apply their skills. But w once you send them a very specific ask, like, hey, we need to help this and that, like it happened with Alessia, like, it, it really works. All right, so let's jump to the second team, uh, Geo team, Daniel, go ahead. Yes, hi everyone. So um, we have recently delivered US census data. Uh, so a US census data extractor on the GitHub. So it gives us um, like information like population and, and so on. Um, this brought to us by Jane, um, Manuel, and Carlos provide with uh, my binder, which is, you know, a way to access the information that we have on there um, for non uh, devs, let's say, for people with less technical background. Feel free to contact us if you need more information. We're already in communication with DataViz team for for this kind of um, of things. Uh, under review for uh, for the GitHub, we have uh, uh, extraction of friends, uh, contagion data, social distancing measures data, and Spanish data. And what we see as next steps are integration with the Kaggle API to set up an automated um, upload of uh, the final data sets. 
and uh, humidity. Let me interrupt uh, you real data. quick. Yes. Is, isn't there a piece that Smart Caveman and Michael already done for that? For what do you uploading mean? We have... the Kaggle data set? Yes, yeah, yeah. We are also betting ourselves on that, but we really want to set up something automated on the GitHub okay. essentially that yes. runs um, you know, um, regularly and uploads because we have time series, right? For example, for temperature. And so we want to update those mm -hmm. regularly and we don't want Makes you know, to have a person doing it. Um, and then about needs, um, we would need a project manager to help us out with the organization and so on because we had Marie with us, but uh, she, she cannot uh, put in the time anymore. We would need a Python developer to help us with validation of pull requests and so on as, uh, let's say, one of the main tasks. Of course, um, they can have other tasks inside the team, but uh, uh, it would be a great help to have someone to help us out with that. And we have a few people working on natural language processing, also in strict collaboration with uh, with Brandon. That's my understanding. And uh, uh, specifically, the um, blocker for them right now is um, segmentation of uh, the body of articles, let's say, um, in the sense of uh, identifier, identifying different types of articles, for example, clinical trials or theoretical studies and things like that. My understanding is that that is also blocking some other people in other tasks. Yes. Um, and uh, for that, it would be great to have uh, a medical professional or a professional researcher in, in the domain, more or less, uh, that could help us define you know, the various types of articles that are around. And I think uh, we because... have a person that just joined today. If someone can uh, help onboard that person, that's a task. Yes, that would be great. And uh, then you can put it in contact with us or, uh, or I guess with Brandon. Uh, anyway, Brandon will be involved in the discussion. Um, so we can define, you know, it's really like understanding what are the categories of different possible articles that we expect to find and that will help us so much in a, you know, uh, subdividing the articles in various categories and then simplifying the work for each of the categories. Sounds great. All right, next great. task. Thanks. Transmission, Christine. Hi, everyone. Um, yeah, so again, we are working on multiple fronts in parallel. Uh, we have several kind of uh, pieces and we need to put them together. We have like the search engine and they're working on the recommendation system and um, their topic uh, exploration. And so and we also started uh, to look at data, extract, data extraction. Um, so I think at the moment we do need, we also need a, uh, a PM uh, to help us organize and uh, especially some also someone who's familiar with you know integrating different modules data flow and visualization person to help us uh, putting all the pieces together um, and yeah also we talked to um, Ayman and his medical student team on annotation uh, yesterday and I think we'll proceed uh, with that very soon so the annotation tags, um, I don't know if it's relevant to what Daniel was referring to. So we're basically um, annotate study designs of the studies, all the papers, and we will uh, uh, build a classification model to classify all the papers on study designs. So I think it's know. worth for, for you to jump in with uh, in conversation with Daniel and Brandon to figure out if, if there is some potential for group work. Right, okay, yeah. Any blockers? Uh, yeah, we just need uh, PM and some uh, people to help us uh, with, um, you know, people's community with visualization or interactive features in the Python uh, environment. Yeah. Sounds great. Uh, I think we'll figure out a process and some people to immediately onboard to you guys uh, probably later today. 
All right, cool. next task, vaccines, Dan Sosa. Hey guys, um, just quickly on Christine's point, I'd like to be in that conversation as well because I'm thinking of, <clears throat> I'm very interested involved in the task of classifying study design uh, automatically with the, with the help of Ayman and his team. So yeah, I think we'll be able to get the annotator started today, so that's awesome. Um, other things happening, uh, people are just basically trying different methods for different tasks, so things like negation detection, relation extraction. They're playing with different uh, BERT models and different implementations of how to do those things. Um, so that's kind of very preliminary work that people are kind of setting up and ramping up. Uh, as far as blockers, I think, well, okay, also I'm going to try to clean up the Trello board a little bit more, divide tasks, and then that'll help us get new people on board and immediately connect them to like a task that they can work on. Because um, I just need to kind of clarify that a little bit. So perhaps project management help uh, in the VNT team could be useful for that kind of thing, just thinking about how to communicate the tasks as clearly as possible and make it easy for new people to get started. But I'm working on that today. Uh, as far as blockers, I think that maybe compute resources might become an issue at some point, especially as we're thinking about like different BERT models. And I, kn I know there are like preliminary conversations about trying to connect with this and that resource to get some credits and all that. I don't know how those conversations went, but there's been interest in that for my team. And so I just wanted to, I'm just curious about that. Yeah, to give an update, very quick update. I'm, I'm back and forth with AWS. Uh, they keep bouncing me with the same questions over and over again. Uh, they're just, from what I'm capturing, they're not uh, prepared to handle so, so many of these requests and they're just trying to manage that load. So there is no update. Uh, no update from Google either. I'm hoping for the new round of press to help us mention some of these uh, issues and potentially uh, give more attention to the current challenge. One, one thing that'll definitely help without any of those people who are needing resources, um, giving a concise description of here's what we need, here's why we need it, and here's how that's actually gonna move things forward um, will, will be a huge help. Okay, awesome. And maybe then you can briefly mention it here on the call in just two sentences, and that way I can uh, cut a clip and just send it directly to AWS. Okay, let me try to gather that from the team and see what people need. It's still probably a little bit early for that, but mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'll let you know. Sounds I would good. get out ahead of that if I were you, if you think you're going to need them. Yeah, so let gotcha. me, you figure out what you think you're going to need and try to get it as soon as uh, as you can get that ball rolling. Right. Okay. Sounds good. All right. So sounds like amazing progress. Uh, it, it's definitely exciting to see all of these things progressing. I think the and the next thing that I put on the agenda is discussing the ideal output of the tasks and type of representation of results, type of data, type of interactivity. And all of those things will kind of, um, you know, get more structure as we figure out this PM timeline for the tasks. But just, um, I would recommend to start thinking about what's that output looking like and maybe even creating a dummy version of those outputs just to wrap your head around uh, how to build a model that produces that type of outputs. Okay, so we're uh, out of the time, but I would like to still uh, have five minutes for discussion of current organizational challenges, resource needs uh, from the admin team. Um, if there is someone that has questions, go ahead and speak up. One last thing I'll quickly mention is that we do need a uh, webmaster as well. Um, that it sounds like you know we're using Webflow, it should be super easy to do, uh, but we need somebody who has that as a designated task and is willing to kind of help us keep everything going because that's you know that's our our biggest front-facing piece to the public and to potential sponsors, donors, and volunteers. And there are so many things that we could be adding to the website too in terms of content, even better explaining what are the four tasks that we're focusing on. Because I, I keep repeating all those things to every person that I talk to, and it will be great to just you know have that uh, mind map mind map embedded, have the basic explanation, you know, including more of the content with the uh, potential medical experts that are joining us. So yeah, just plenty of stuff on that frontier. All right, sounds good, guys. Thank you so much for jumping in. Uh, as always, stay healthy. 
please stay healthy. There are more and more people getting sick and it's becoming uh, definitely a visible issue. So have enough sleep, drink enough water, eat great food, and please stay sane. All right. All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.